Okay, so welcome to part two of this video. We're going to install the A10-7850 into the system behind me. It's currently got the 6800K, this is part two of a, a video. We're upgrading the motherboard and processor. We wanted to go for the FM2 socket, so obviously the thing to go for was the k APU that I've just released. Let's go ahead and put it into the system. So this is our little system. It's a custom made machine. Um, you've probably seen it in lots of different videos probably about 10 different videos now. It's been used for benchmarking and tech demos, all sorts of stuff. I like to do videos outside of work on it, um, out of my work hours. You know, it's a good system, it's a good project. We built these to use as our main machines. Um, we've got the R9 290 in here, graphics card. That's a borderline fitting card, as I'm sure you can see from there. It's going to bring you closer, you can see. Um, you've got literally a centimetre to spare there. But as with all good jobs, well done. Anything well done, you know, if it, we got it in there in the end, you know, that's what she said. So, um, we're going to replace the processor today. Today, as you can see, there's a Corsair H100i water cooling block attached to the system. So, we're just going to take that off, remove the thermal compound, the grease, uh, put the new processor in there, and then obviously boot the system up and uh, see what differences we get. Now, with Existing A10 6800K processor uh, and DirectX, we get about we get around 50 to 55 frames a second on Battlefield 4 in this setup. So as it is now, 50 to 55 frames uh, on ultra settings 1080p. Uh, mantle, we get sort of 70 to 80, depending on the map and the amount of stress it's under for players, things like that. So we're going to see what the differences are with the Cavery APU in here instead of the A10. And I'm going to turn the machine on its back. I'm going to move the camera so you can see what we're doing. Okay then, so let's get cracking. First things first, I'm just going to remove the two uh, water block uh, sort of pin down screws that hold the water block onto the CPU. So just undo them. Okay, so we're going to clean all of this existing thermal compound off of here and the right. processor itself inside, which you can see down there. So we're going to clean off the existing thermal compound from the copper cooling block here and on the processor itself. Now, most people would use um, an alcohol white um, or alcohol gel, so we're just going to go ahead and use some um, hand sanitizer to clean it. It's alcohol based, 100% alcohol, so that will clean it nicely. Let's do this. As you see, I mean that's more or less clean enough for now. So let's go ahead and do the processor next. Just earthing myself on the case, the chassis. Take the processor out, do the same thing with that. It needs cleaning, it's just covered in thermal paste, probably a bit too much actually. Everyone's going, oh, what are you doing? You don't put that on there, don't do this, it's gonna damage it, you stupid idiot. Oh, what are you doing? The truth of the matter is, I don't care. It's gonna clean this processor off lovely, it just how much we want it to, so I don't care. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. He's getting thermal compound all over his fingers, look. Go back to school, mate. Well, I already work at a school, so <laughs> I can't really go back to school. Right, clean, clean. Let's put it back in with a new processor. Okay, now I've cleaned the original processor so it can go back in its box and the copper cooling box cooked, cleaned off. Let's go ahead and put on, put in the new processor. So here is the new processor score. A10. Right, let's go ahead and put it in. Well, they weigh a ton, these processors. Yeah. I've always wondered why they're so heavy, but I guess it's all the components in them. Let's go ahead and put it in. So look for your little key and put it in. Lock it down, nice and easy. 
Got some Arctic silver here. So it transfers the heat from the component itself to the cooling copper block. Uh, without this, you would have a pretty ineffective cooling solution. Um, it wouldn't work too well, let's just say. Let's go ahead and put a pea-sized amount on the, on the top of the processor here. Hopefully the camera can see from here. So, a little pea-sized amount on there. And then it's really simple, just putting the block back on and screwing it down. And that is a processor change. So let's go ahead and clip this back on. Which is magnetic, which is nice. Really good way of doing it. Oh no, he's not wearing his anti-static wristband. Quick, call the police. He's broken his computer from ESD. Amateur. Amateur, he's rubbish. Don't listen to that guy. He doesn't know what he's doing. Right, simple as that, done. Process has been installed. We need to put our 12 volt power back in. Plug in your little LED light back in so that it lights up and shiny. Tidy the cables away so there's no cables all over the shop, as they would say. Amateur. <laughs> it's rubbish that Jake is. Don't listen to him. He knows nothing. Right. Plug that cable back in. It powers the LED light on the cooling block. The rest of the cable's already attached. I'm not really worried about those. I haven't got small enough hands to do this. I hate that. It's the one thing with working on these small motherboards. You can't bloody get your hands in. Right. Done. And then just finally just reconnect your... 12 volt, motherboard supply, the processor, and other components. Et voila! And that is what we're left with. A nice, fixed computer, new processor fitted, new thermal compound grease fitted, and ready to go. Let's plug it back in and see how we get on. Okay, it's detected there's new hardware, new processor. That's what it looks like inside the case. Custom made computers, two SSDs, 16 gig of RAM, the A10 7850 APU processor, Cavery APU from AMD, a 500 watt power supply, the F2 888XN Wi Fi motherboard in there, the box for that. And then the R9 290 graphics card from AMD as well. So next FX, nice card. There we have it. Put it back up. Let's see how we get on. As you can see, the mantle. <laughs> I mean destroyed. Um, you see the frame rate up there in the mantle at the moment on BF4 with the KV APU in there and the R9 290 graphics card. 16 gig of RAM. So, so far so good. Things are running quite nicely, so we'll see how it goes from now on. So overall, uh, this project was a, a great success. I noticed quite a lot of differences between DirectX and uh, Mantle. Um, I wouldn't say it's groundbreaking frame rate differences, but then it is a micro motherboard, and there was a lot of heat in that case. That could be why. I recommend this setup to anyone that wants to play Battlefield 4, because that's what we've been tested on. But remember, this video is not a performance benchmark video. It's just there to show what we were doing, to show changes in the system, and, you know, for fun. So, thanks for watching. I'm Jake Billing. We'll see you next time. See you later.